morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of my people. I am Tia Viona Muhammad, your source for strategies, tips, and resources on how to raise your black child to be a millionaire. Hashtag raising black millionaires. Today we are going to go over the third installment for our hashtag raising black millionaires series. Uh, entitled, At What Age Should I Begin Teaching Financial Literacy to My Children? Let's jump right in. Yesterday morning, I had my interview with Louise Enrique Neveron, president of Atlanta Market Region for Operation Hope. You can visit their website at operationhope.org slash Atlanta to learn more about their programs. During our talk, we covered so many awesome points of advice for parents, but a couple of my favorite were centered around teaching financial literacy at an early age. From our talk, it became clear that as early as children are able to ask you to buy them things from the store, they can begin receiving lessons on financial literacy. But there were two highlighted points I'd like us to discuss. Point number one, the power of demonstration is priceless. One of the beautiful aspects about Operation Hope is that they provide free services that educate children on financial literacy while simultaneously providing financial literacy services to the parents of those children. Why is this relevant? Because so many of us parents don't know the first thing about financial literacy. All we know is whether or not we have the money to buy a particular good or service. But the fundamentals of money management and concepts we simply have no clue about. But why is that? Because learning them wasn't a part of our educational curriculum in grade school, nor was it a part of our dinner table conversations. Since many of us have realized in our adulthood that children do what they see their parents do, not what they do, we should further realize that a big part of teaching our children economic responsibility and accountability must come from them seeing us prioritize it ourselves. More on that later. Point number two, demonstration followed up with conversation sticks. As Mr. Negron pointed out, this changes the conversations between parents and children. In many cases, it may even simply get the conversation about money started. Mr. Negron said that at the age of 10, as the only English speaking person in his household, he had to translate and open various accounts on behalf of his family. In other words, as a 10-year-old boy, he was fully exposed to the household finances and had a clear understanding of where, when, and how much money was coming in and to where, when, and how much money was going out. In that, he said that his parents always took the time to follow up each transaction he was instructed to carry out or observe them carrying out with the conversation about what had taken place. This helped him to gain such a strong perspective on how money works that he discovered that he had an advantage over his peers very early on. We'll discuss in our next post one very huge advantage this experience provided him. You will so love that one. Nevertheless, Louise said that many of his lessons from his parents and uncle didn't really come from them giving him instructions on how to do th these things. Often they would give him a command or allow him to observe them conducting some, some form of business. Then they would share parables with him that related to what they just demonstrated to him. I personally thought that that was fascinating. The fact that he really emphasized the fact that his parents would teach him lessons in parables. When was the last time you heard our community teaching each other concepts, very life-changing, uh, life-founding uh, lessons through parables? I think that's beautiful, me, myself, personally. This kept him intrigued and constantly ready to learn the next lesson. As a matter of fact, this part of his story reminded me of the story of the richest man in Babylon. If you've never read it, it would be a great read as a bedtime story or a refreshing little downtime lesson. In the meantime, let us find ourselves learning to implement one money management tip or financial literacy term every day. 
and allow our children to witness our learning process, then talk with them about their understanding of what they see us learning. Keep an eye out for financial literacy terms of the day. They are coming soon. Uh, also, go to raisingmillionaires.wordpress.com and check out the poll that we have. Uh, this poll question that we have for this particular article is, at what age were you first taught about finances? Um, the, you, was it 0 to 5 years, 6 to 13 years, mid to late teens, or when I received my first bill? So check that out. Participate in the poll, please, and comment. Comment, share, and become a part of the conversation. You can check just below and subscribe to the channel. And you can also check below and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. I'd very much look forward to knowing any questions that you have for any upcoming interviews I have with other millionaires. If you have specific questions uh, that you think you may want to know specifically from the strategies of millionaires, then send me a message. Leave it in the box below or leave it in the comments on the site and I'll be very happy to uh, ask those questions in the interviews as well as respond to your questions if uh, I've already gotten some answers on that question. So I look forward to hearing from you all. Thanks so much for your participation and your contribution to our all all of us learning how to raise our black children to be millionaires take care peace